This is, as far as we know, um, Guido Cavalcanti's 19th poem. I'm sure you've all had a lot on your minds, but I thought you might like to take a break from your issues to concentrate on mine. Which include dry rot and whistling gaskets and an ache in the gut that's calling out for diner rod. I am these sensations of someone else's knuckles just behind my eyeballs, which make it impossible to gaze reflectively upon the world or freshen up the stale pits of my mind. And that's a shame, because I'd seen some sights and enjoyed a stunning range of inputs, which made my thinking feel like a fountain playing incessantly through the nights of a small piazza in the ghetto, instead of one of those tiny red lights on the extension lead under the desk. I've reached that stage when glimpses of justice and gorgeousness such as fresh leaf on beach or any member of the Cod family, proper policy, her face and music, sending these little ripples through the wine, hurt my eyes and render me rickety, knowing their value and fragility. OK, a bit of Cabal County. <clears throat> as Ian hinted, I've been getting quite a lot of mileage over the last few years out of poetry, um, which partly started um, with a fascination for how boring so much of Petrarch could be. Um, anyway, I'd like to read some, uh, some of Petrarch's sonnets in, um, in my versions. In the first one, uh, Wyatt is not the Renaissance English poet, the, the translator, it's uh, the musician. This is um, sonnet number 146. In this episode of Montalbano, somebody removed my skull and swapped it for that of an unacknowledged woman. The policeman spoke a lot of sense and left. Again, I resign myself to patience, though the cards have been marked, then bleached by time, and time again conspires to clear the decks. For the ghosts within, 2012, begins with Wyatt's new translation of Laura, whose versions inhabit and inhibit these ecologies of vows and misplaced constants, wearing thin through undermining tides and fluctuating breezes over molehills made of mountains I can't climb. Sonnet 151. Amor, natura e la bella alma umile. Simone Martini is touching up Laura as Madonna of the big tent. The widescreen attraction of Siena is gradually losing its appeal. Leave a few oven chips out for the rats along the polycarbonate anti-roosting spikes which decorate the fences. The wine is so bad, I've cut it with Fanta. <laughs> I guess... <laughs> I guess we all have weeks that go, tits up, internet down, and fuel prices soaring past a corn plaster bigger than my head. I keep rushing around while sitting still, trying to find the mysterious leak through which my hopes trickle into the sound. Pottering in Brompton Cemetery, I paused by the grave of Francis Linden and pondered on what remained here below, among the leaves of dusty shrubs and books. You, on the other hand, still walk the earth, in a state of grace merely travestied, in a selection of dog-eared notebooks, two wonky memory sticks, and a pamphlet. And I think you deserve a bit of bark, all of your own, or some undiscovered Keats, or how about Sophie Robinson? But in case nothing better comes along, I'll leave these wild flowers in a jam jar on your windowsill the hour before dawn. This is uh, Petrarch's 164th. Laura Celeste can quel verde Laura. Banging on about the laurel again. Just as elitist ideologies turn the hearts of Tories into pumice, 
So Medusa's unforgiving glances objectify the subject into rock and dope's white heat and light metamorphose fairly normal people into deathly pauses in their own lives. Well, you could say her eyes have had the same effect on me. Not just her eyes, but you know about her hair, each strand of which ties your wrists to thick posts in a sultry afternoon at the back of your imagination. That's nothing to be proud of, and you're floating above yourself and her unfathomable name. Whose bright idea was it to come back here? The least successful venue in the land. Each of my personal appearances has ended in a food fight or arson. Better to burn up than it is to rust, as the man said, which has a lot of truth, unless you have your own ranch and railway. But me, I've had my fill of combustion. I see the ends come shining through her eyes, the smiling angel with its spear poised from Benini's risque transverberations. Reviewed by the old guys from the Muppets in their privileged marmorial booth overlooking this fatal arena. How much time? Uh, five minutes? Se un fede amoroso un cor non finto. If I can keep my head while all around lovers lunge at each other's attributes, queue up for more Q8 chrysanthemums and gift wrap inventive new vibrators. And if a face can launch a thousand ships, then why does she insist on sinking mine? Not to mention her habit of snipping through the strings of my acrobatic kite. If I were a carpenter, I'd knock up a wooden horse to park in your garden. If I were a boy, I'd do it again. I swear I wouldn't be a better man. If you're happy and you know it, fuck off. <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do is... Actually, I've got that to read this one. Number 271. Not the brilliance of a clear night sky, nor the wide light dynamics of the sea, nor more news of gassings and fresh drone strikes, nor the saxophone of Charlie Parker. Not the searing singing of Sean Bonney, nor the magical paintings of Paul Clay, not even the husky melodic sob of Billy Holiday all the poems of Frank O'Hara can now touch my heart, buried in the same lifeless earth as hers who kept my engine running through it all. I am a nut job's forgotten bunker. Useless blankets, cartons of long life milk, a cupboard full of rusting tins of fruit. Okay, I would like to finish with... Um, well, maybe not finished. It depends whether Ian throws anything at me after this. I'd like to well, that depends on what you read. Oh, all right. I'd like to read something else by Cavalcanti. Um, so this is, um, according to recent research, is probably Cavalcanti's first poem, Fresco Rosa Novella. And it's this big. Your shocking pink tendresse electrifies my sticky nests and spritz of jizzy rhubarb shoots sap up jinging, singing lamb and germ. In Asian, I now lay, lie at your feet and your edgy vitality, which quietly strikes everyone everywhere always, including sheepdogs and bugs of the field and campsite reptiles and marsupials. And residents of Devon have this urge to congregate at the ends of motorways to hone extended cover versions of every track on astral weeks, weeks in celebration of your alto tendency to stretch us. You're a super looking human which is thoroughly inspiring in that crippling kind of fashion that first got people visualising angels then etching them into their own flesh using lumps of anthracite and millstone grit. Tongue tied up, delirious fantasies occupying decades pursuing the inedible in one sentence to plaster over wounds going right through one side and out the other. Known traditionally as idealism, which has had such a bad press for decades now, protected by cruisers and airy planes marked with the pig bone logo. But I get idealistic when I see you redesigning my interiors and outside spaces and some of that 
must be projected into sketches of the future, no matter whose that then turns out to be, gardens going mental under mistranslated constellations. Thank you very much.